I'm not going to stop this. Please, Kati, please. It's a long time, Mama. So precious is yours, is mine. Only one at a time. My life. I looked at the house. Victorian style house. I don't see a car. This is what fascinates me about uh, people in the summer at the time. You'll think the house is a small house. But when you go in, but when you go in, it's a humongous house. So what you see in front is not the actual story of what is behind the doors. Well, I first met Tando, you were still a youngster. Uh, you were, I think you were still around about under 21 that time. We were at Cape Town, you know, uh, it's right in the book where he, he, he talks about the Spornet camp. And at that time, you know, uh, SA Rugby used to, you know, select all the, 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 the kind of like potential players where they think that they'll make it. But then again, you know, the funny part is that we're in two camps. There was a white camp and a, and a black camp. So we were one of those guys that were the first one, you know, to, to, to be in that uh, black camp in terms of, you know, rugby. So he was quite quiet then. I think he was fairly new and uh, I think he was probably even even younger those years to, to, to voice his opinion purely because you know we had the likes of Del Sentin who was there it was you know Owen who was with me that time so the, there were quite a few senior Ricardo Lopcha was there Stanley Robbenheimer so you know the core of you know the so-called you know black guys that were coming through that time trying to make it and he was just sitting there obviously he didn't say that much so basically the moral of the story is that we were busy trying to, you know, um, uh, organize a big strike, which is in the book. You guys will probably read about it, where we wanted to actually have um, a strike where we didn't want any, you know, a black person to play rugby in consideration, making sure that, you know, we wanted our, uh, them just to hear our voice. So that's the first time when I met Tando. I think apart from that, you know, I could see him play. I think I was probably at the end of my career when I finished when he was still just coming up, you know, and just make the mark in rugby. The first job I got and I from and I does Lakela and the and that was an obak when they can do in a con bagot. And yeah, you get a job as a ten is our labor is second um dana ufuna in job a fundis and yan open funds aquam zakupulu legs in one dayen is a bonus in one. And it's one of the honors to see such a book being written and I think it's as you understand that history must be documented uh, for many to read to know what's happening and at the same time I'm excited to know that Tando as an individual played uh, played the same team uh, where he, he, for the Bulls and then the, the way he carried himself to this day in saying well he's doing he's breaking boundaries he's breaking uh, doors and saying well for this guy, for me to be here, he made it, made it work for us to come to the system. First time I saw Tanda, he was in the Bulls jersey, and um, I saw him on television. And I was surprised at the, at the size of the of the man, you know, um, because you often see white players that size, um, and he was this big, barking flank forward. 
Um, and he happened to play at a time at the Bulls where there was a young man by the name of Joseph Chongwane as well. Um, and I, I knew Joseph and, and, and obviously I got to know Tando um, through Joseph and a few guys like Lamla Maneli, where all of them were at the Bulls then. Um, and we parted ways a little bit and then we met up a few years later when he returned back from Ireland and he stopped playing rugby um, within, the, within the field of journalism and and yeah, I, mean, I, you know, I, I go back to those memories and I, and I say to myself, you know, had, had he been given enough opportunities, a lot of guys have, you know, um, we'll be talking about Tando today in a different manner. But at the same time, I'm also glad those opportunities didn't come to him easily because we wouldn't have the story of Tando Manana the way we have it today. Tando Manana is the kind of individual and this book is the kind of book I think that should serve as a reminder that sometimes when you have the opportunity, it's not okay to just stand at the gate or walk around that house. Sometimes you need to take the opportunity to that you have, use the power that you are given or the power that you create for yourself and actually break down the gate, knock on the door and say, I belong here as well. Oh, but I don't know. That is a character one and I want to have a new hub. Yeah, also, I'm cool. I'm not 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 cool. I'